Hi, happy Friday to you. I'm glad you're with me today. All right, we've gone through another week. Um, we're going to be in Psalm 138 today, so if you want to turn there. Well, Psalm 138 was written by David. We don't know when. Uh, we don't know what event in his life he was in at this particular time. It was a troubling time. It was a time of great stress for him. He was in big trouble. Maybe, you know, his life was being threatened. Uh, maybe it was one of those events. Maybe it was an event we didn't, he didn't write. It wasn't even written about. We don't know, but it was a great event. And uh, it's been said that when we get in trouble and we're living in some trouble, then that will either reveal the worst or the best in us. And uh, David kind of shows us here how we can allow the best to be seen in us when we're in trouble and we don't know what to do. Let's pick it up at verse 1. I give you thanks, O Lord, with all my heart. I will sing your praises before the gods. So the first thing we need to do when we're in trouble, the first thing we need to do is we need to lift him up and we need to praise him. And it says before all the gods, that's, that's little g, you know, so that, that means all the things, you know, even in our lives that, that have become gods to us, you know, sometimes it's, it's, it's whatever we spend most of our time with will become our God. And so maybe he's talking about lifting up those kinds, praising him before those things and worshiping him in, instead of those things. I think he's also talking about the, the gods that are named that people worship. But, he, and, uh, but it's little G because there is only one true and living God. And that's the God that we serve. And uh, so we need to understand that. So, but there are those that are that worship other gods, and it's before them. In in every situation, in every event, no matter what we're hearing, we need to be exalting the name of our God. We need to be lifting up the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and honoring Him in everything that we do. And that's what He's saying. And then He gives some reasons here. In verse two, He says, "In verse two, I bow before Your holy temple as I worship." And then He gives a list of reasons in verses two and three. Uh, I think there's about five of them. You can count them as you're going through, but I think there's there's these, but I know there are these reasons for him bowing down and he lists them. And there's many, many more reasons than this to bow down and worship the Lord God, but here's some really good ones, okay? In verse two, he says, I bow down before your holy temple as I worship. I praise your name for number one, your unfailing love. Your unfailing love. God's love never fails. God's love is always there. He never. He, he loves you no more today than he did yesterday. He knows loves you no less than he ever has. His love is unchanging. He loved you before you re accepted him. He loves you the same after you accept him. His love is perfect and it never changes. You know, so so God will honor that and. And uh, we, we need to praise him because no matter what, you know, David's saying, I'm in the midst of trouble here, but I'm, I can bow down and praise him because I know he loves me. In the midst of this, I'm in, I'm in a situation here. I don't know how to get out of it, but I'm going to praise him because I know he loves me. And I know because he loves me, he will take care of me. He will protect me. He will be my shield because he loves me. And his love never fails. It goes on in verse two, and your faithfulness. I think the King James says, uses the word truth there, but it's it's faithfulness, it's truth. You know what, what, what I think that really means? It means that that, that uh, because of who God is, his nature, his being, he's, he's just, he's righteous, he's honorable, he's perfect. So he he's true to himself. He cannot be untrue to himself because that's who he is and that's who he's always going to be. So he's going to be faithful to every word he's ever spoken. He's going to be faithful to everything he ever does in our lives. He's going to be faithful to everything because he's, he's truth and he will be faithful unto himself. So he will be faithful to us in all things. For your promises are backed by all the honor of your name, your promises. He has exalted his word. That's what it's talking about here. His word is above all things. Isn't that incredible? So he can praise him. David is saying, I can praise him because his word is above all things. So no matter what's going on, no matter what, what I see with my eyes, 
That may be different than what I see in the word. And the word is above even what I see in my eyes. I have people tell me, you know, they're trying to explain something that that's an experience they have. And if it's contrary to the word of God, I, I, I've got to believe the word of God. Not that they're lying. They may think they had that experience or, or whatever, or believe that's the way it is. But his word is above all things. He said he wouldn't forsake us. I talk to people say, I don't feel God. I don't feel God anymore. It has nothing to do with feelings and we'll deal with that. But God has not left because he said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And he is faithful to his word. Everything he has ever spoken, he's, it'll, it'll be that way. Everything you've ever word, have you ever read in the word that, that's been a promise to you or something that you looked at and said, wow, that's for me. That has not changed. His word never changes and it's above all things. Then it goes to verse three. As soon as I pray, you answer me. So David says, I can worship him and I can praise him because he answers me. Prayer is real. Prayer, prayer works. He, he, he answers my prayers. Now, does that mean that he says yes to everything? We know better than that. No, he doesn't say yes to everything. Sometimes he says, yes, I'll take care of that right now. I, 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 I've been waiting for you just to come and talk to me about that. And yeah, I'll take care of that. I'll give you the strength to overcome that. I'll, I'll, I'll work in that situation. I'll bring solution to this, yes. And the answer is, yes, yeah, sometimes it's it's yes, but not right now. I've got things I have to do. There's things I'm, I want to take, not that I'm busy, but there's things I need to see happen in this situation is what he's saying. And he's not saying he's too busy. He's just saying that I've got to, I've got to do some things in this situation that will bring it to the point where I want it to be. So sometimes he says, just give me, give me a minute here. You know, and, and a minute, well, a day is as a thousand years, so a minute may be a little bit longer than we want it to be at times, but it's okay because he's going to do it right. And you know what? Sometimes he says, no, I'm not going to do it that way. You know, I'm not, I'm not going, no, because it's, it's not what, what is best for everybody because God only does good things. Every good and perfect gift comes from above from the Father of lights whom there is no variable, there's no shadow of turning. You know, God's a good God. God is good, you know, and, and we need to understand that. And so, you know, he's going to answer our prayers, but he's going to always answer them the way that he knows is best. So you, you've got to stick with that. And then in verse three, he goes on, you encourage me by giving me strength. So the fifth thing is he revives. He strengthens, he encourages. And and so, you know, I've, I've seen that in my life so many times. I mean, I, I can get down, I can get so down, you know, just recently in the, in the loss of one of my daughters, I, I got so down and I was, I was, I was so in so much pain at, at the grief and, and all of a sudden, you know, the, the, the strength begins to come back and begins to encourage and begins to revive and begins to lift you up again and, and point your eyes in the right direction. And, you know, there's, I mean, there's, there remains hurt and grief and, 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 and pain in situations like that, but I'm becoming strong again. I, I understand that, that God is in charge. I can, I can seriously sit here and teach his word and tell you that, that he only does good things and he's only right. And I, I take that by faith and I believe that. And he strengthens and encourages us. And David says, because of that, I can bow down and praise his holy name. Pick it up at verse four. Every king in all the earth will thank you, Lord, for all of them will hear your voice. All oh, he's, 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 he's praying that for God's coming kingdom. Uh, it's not here yet. There will be a day. This has to do with our end times. There will be a day that he's going to set up his kingdom on this earth. There's going to be a day when all of a sudden this is, this is all over. And he told us he, his promises are true. He said, I've gone to prepare a place for you. He said, my father's house are many mansions that were not so I would have told you. But he said, I've gone to prepare a place for you. And the place it says, and the voice of the archangel shout from God. And then Christ shall rise first. And we which remain will be caught up together in the air and meet him in, in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And then there's a, a, a 
marriage feast of the Lamb in heaven while we're there down here on earth. The tribulation period is going on because that's the rapture. We go and see him, spend some time in. Then we come back with him at the end of a seven-year period and he uh, takes over this planet, sets up his kingdom, rules and reigns for a thousand years on this earth like it's supposed to be. And then he creates a new heaven and a new earth. And we're going to be with him forever and ever and ever. And period that during the period of time, that thousand years of millennium when he reigns, in, in that all the kings of the earth will bow down to him. He's going to show up at a big battle called the Battle of Armageddon in the, in the, in the Valley of Megiddo. Megiddo and and um, uh, he's going to show up and the, the war is going to be over because he showed up. And there's going to be a time when all the kings bow down to him. And his righteousness. <laughs> Verse 5. Yes, they will sing about the Lord's ways. And the glory of the Lord is very great. The kings will sing about his ways. Because of his amazing glory. They just. Um, we have. I has not seen. Everything that we're going to be involved with. And what's coming in. And. And. I believe a pretty short period of time. It could be very soon, and I, I hope so. The world's the world's getting it's just falling apart, you know. And and there's a time when God's going to look at that and say, "Okay, son, it's over. It's time. Go, go get him. Bring him home." And uh, we're going to be caught up together, and we're going to meet him, and it's going to be fantastic. And then we're going to watch him rule and reign. What that thousand years is, he's going to show us how it should have been, you know, run the first time. And how it was supposed to, the way he, why he created it, and a uh, new kingdom, and it's going to be incredible. Verse 6, though the Lord is great, he cares for the humble, but he keeps his distance from the proud. The kings will know that he is highly exalted. Though I am surrounded by troubles, you will protect me from the angers of my enemy. All right, so... Now he's getting back to, to, to the present time and what he's, what he's, you know, praying about it. And we need to see that in our times of trouble, to acknowledge our confidence in the Lord. Just look at verse 7. Though I'm surrounded by troubles, you will protect me from the anger of my enemies. So I can just stop and realize that he will protect me. He will protect me in the midst of my trouble. In the face of all my foes. That's what David's saying. His trouble's coming. And I believe it was a time that they were trying to kill him. And they, they're coming. My foes are out there. The enemies are there. They want to get me. They want to destroy me. But he will protect me in all of that. And I want to tell you, my friend, he'll protect you in all of your trouble, in all of your pain, in all of your situation. God is there. And he will take care of you in the midst of your trouble. In facing all of your foes, He's there and he's fighting for you and he will always win. Verse eight says, and or go to verse seven, you reach out your hand and the power of your right hand saves me. I just love that thought, man. The power of your right hand saves that power in the name of Jesus. And we need to just receive that power and claim that power. And I don't mean in a weird way, but just claim that power over this enemy. I'm not going to, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be bound by this any longer. I'm not going to live my life according to this. that has me bound up in Jesus name by his strength. I walk away from this. It has me bound up and separated from the life that I'm supposed to live in Christ Jesus. His power can break that bondage, can break those chains in your life. In my life, that's what he does. That's who he is. He can face all your foes. And we take this from David's saying, and we look at his foes, there were enemies coming, but you know, there's, you, you have one that really hates you. And that's Satan, man. He would do anything to rip you off and destroy you and lie to you. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Reject what the enemy has to say. The Bible says, you know, to, uh, you know, seek him, his, seek him first and all of his righteousness. Draw near to him. Resist the devil. And Jesus will draw near to you. So we need to draw near him. And if you're going through stuff right now, draw near to Jesus. Stop and pray. And Jesus, fill me fresh with your strength and your power. 
Why? The Lord will work out his plans for my life. Don't you like that? God has a purpose for you, has a purpose for me. He'll work it out. Philippians 1, 6. I'm confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will complete it till the day of Jesus Christ. He will complete what he began in you. Trust him. Why? Because verse 8 says, his love endures forever. For your faithful love, O God, endures forever. The love we talked about earlier will last forever. It endures forever. And because of that, he will fulfill whatever purpose he created you for. If you surrender to you, to him, if I surrender to him, my life, whatever purpose he has in my life will be, will, will work out. Because his love endures forever. Even if I failed him a thousand times in the past, his love is still enduring. And when I come back to that place and say, God, I surrender in this trouble right now, but I trust you because your love endures forever. He'll walk us through that. He'll walk you through that and continue to complete his purpose in your life. And then God, the last statement he makes, don't abandon me for you made me. So he says, I can praise him because I can say with confidence, don't abandon me because I know you will never forsake me, God. You will never forsake me. You told us, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And God, we hang on to that this day. Would you pray with me? Father, I thank you for this, this little short little psalm that is so powerful, so powerful in, in what David was saying here, Lord, and what you uh, preserved for us to read this day. And I believe people were listening that needed to hear these words that you had written down and you knew this day would happen in their lives, in our lives. You knew this specific, specific day would transpire, they would be listening to these words read, and you have a plan to fulfill something in each and every life. So break the bondages that are represented here right now, the things that have anybody tied up, the things that keep hitting us, Lord, over and over, some of those things we kind of succumb to at times when we shouldn't, we surrender those. There are others that are listening right now that are in a major bondage. Lord, break those chains of bondage. Set them free this very moment, Lord. Let them see you again high and lifted up. Thank you, blessed, blessed Savior. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for this song. In your name we pray, Savior. Amen. Well, hope you have a great weekend. I haven't told you this in a while, but you need to be with the family this weekend at some point, okay? I mean your church family. You need to be with your brothers and sisters. If you haven't gone back after the pandemic, this Sunday's a good time to go back to wherever, <coughs> excuse me, wherever you fellowship, you need to get back there. You know, it's not the same. You can say, I'd watch it on uh, my, my television or my computer or whatever. It's not the same. You need to gather with brothers and sisters and Get the strength. He said, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, as some are doing, but especially as you see the day approaching and the day is approaching. We need each other's strength. So gather wherever it is you're supposed to be. You ought to be there today, all right? And encourage somebody. God bless you. See you Monday, all right? Bye.